Everybody is excited about George Pickens and what he's doing in training camp for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But does the rookie need to be put in check? Brisbane Jackson, his receiver coach, says no because he's taking it one step at a time and not getting ahead of himself. I talked with Frisbane Jackson. You're going to hear that interview on this show, Locked on Steelers, and we're going to get you ready for the Steelers opening preseason game at Acrisure Stadium Saturday. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked on Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content whenever we have breaking news to update you on. So, as I said, I had a good talk with Frisbane Jackson, the Steelers' new wide receivers coach. Um, and it was an interesting talk. And... A big part of what I wanted to ask him about was George Pickens, because we all know, you know, we're all, you know, know about Deontay Johnson. They paid him. There is intrigue about Chase Claypool, but George Pickens is the story right now. He's lighting up training camp almost every day. Uh, in fact, in seven shots, he caught one more touchdown uh, in uh, on on, thir- on Thursday. He almost caught another one. Uh, I thought he was in. Mike Tomlin waved it off, said it was incomplete, but. Point is, he has been a threat almost every time he's been on the field for the Steelers. He le- leaps over people. He shakes. He shakes them. He shakes past them when he has the ball in his hand. He you know wins combat catches. He has speed. He's beating press. He's doing everything and more that you ask of a top tier wide receiver, especially as a rookie. So, you know, one can imagine. Well, hey, you're hearing all that success, and when he's making plays, I mean, the crowd at at St. Vincent College is getting loud, they're getting excited, and you have to wonder, okay, could this be going to his head? You know, because we've all seen people go to their head. I mean, did did y'all see that tweet from Antonio Brown where he was saying the greatest regret of his life is that he never got to see himself play for the first time? Like, your power and success can get to guys. And being a young player, and having so much success early on, you have to ask, okay, is he feeling himself at all? Brisbane Jackson, his wide receiver coach, doesn't think that way. And I wanted you to hear my early part of the interview when I, where I asked Brisbane Jackson that and then kind of started to get into more parts of how George Pickens has been fitting into this wide receiver crew and other aspects of it. Here's current Steelers wide receiver coach, Brisbane Jackson. Good. So, friends. We've seen George Pickens make plays all over training camp. Everyone's saying, wow, and oh my gosh. How do you keep a rookie like that in check who might like start feeling himself? Or is he? Does he? Is that even something you have to worry about with him? Coach him every play. I mean, it's something he needs to work on every single play. So, you know, even when he makes a spectacular catch or he makes a play and I hear all the crowd oohing and on, whether they ooh or are or not, I'm going to coach him. I'm going to find something he needs to work on to get better at. And so that's what I do, man. I try to coach him and just not him, just all the guys, man. Every single play. There's something we need to work on to get better at, and so that's what I'm doing. Have you seen him get caught up in any of that yet? No, no. He's a pretty grounded dude. Um, you know, he wants to be a great football player. He knows it requires you to do hard work and do hard things and, and work your butt off and not not to ignore all the noise outside. And uh, I tell him all the time, man, ignore the noise. Don't worry about the sheep. We all lions. The sheep worry about all that stuff. We just don't worry about playing ball. So that's what we're out here trying to do. We see him pretty eager to, to, to kind of snap back at the defense when they snap at him. Is that something that, that makes you kind of get excited when you see him work? Yeah, I mean, like that's that fire. part of it. That get, that he has a personality. I love his personality. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to do a great job as a staff making sure we, we control it and not it, it doesn't affect the team or don't cost the team in the long run. But, man, he got a personality. I love it to bring some juice to the room. Um, and as long as it's not a distraction or as long as it's not affecting the team in a negative way, I'm going to let him be him. Anything you tell these guys heading into this first game, that you, especially the younger guys that you want? <laughs> no, nah, man, I just told them to go out here and play football, man. We all fighting for jobs. I always say we, man, because I'm included in it. Um, we all are out here fighting for jobs. We're trying to find a spot. And uh, just go out here and play football, have fun, man, like you did when you were in Little League. You just lined up and you went and put the pads on. You went out and played. You didn't worry about anything. So just go out there and play. 
what have Deontay and Chase been like for as like the kind of guys like, hey, this is we've been in this offense. We know the routine, even though they've had to miss practices here and there. Oh, uh, man, you know what? They want to be coached. Uh, those guys are constantly asking questions, trying to find that competitive edge any way they can, whether they've been out there or not. Um, and I've enjoyed having them in the room, man. They've talked. They've been vocal. They've been trying to correct the young guys. Um, but they act like rookies as far as trying to learn the offense and grasp the offense. So uh, we're doing a little bit of different things, man. So we're just trying to take advantage of who the, the guys we have out there and uh, just keep this train moving like Coach says. So that was Frisbee Jackson. Now, before I get into more responses to it, I, I want you all to understand at least my perspective of how I'd see him coach so far. You know, Ike Hilliard last year came in. Ike Hilliard, a former you know, NFL wide receiver for the Giants and you know, a lot of different teams. He came in, and he was more of a hands-off approach. And, and when I say hands-off, I mean, like, he, he didn't get in your face. He sort of told you what you were supposed to do, and if you didn't do it, well, that was that, and he was just going to find another way to coach. And – that's fine if it works. You know, there, there's a lot of coaches that operate that. Tony Dungy was a guy, he's like, he said something once, and if you didn't do it, he was going to find someone else who did it. But he wasn't going to get in your face and yell and get loud. It was just, you know, how he was. Brisbane Jackson is not that kind of coach. He is up in their grills on every single rep. Even I, I think I even brought this up in mini camp and OTAs. That's why I really started to first see it up close and personal. You know, when a guy ran a route, if he didn't finish, if he didn't do do something the, the exact right way, here's when Jackson would get, would get up in his face and hey, say, hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get into this. And and it could and it wasn't just the rookies. It would be veterans, be Anthony Miller, be Chase Claypool. He would get into. Now I haven't seen him really do it to Deontay Johnson, but again, he's Deontay Johnson, and he also wasn't working out for the longest time because he was holding in. But my point is, is that his approach is very hands on. His approach is very. I'm going to challenge you every single rep, or if you do exactly what I tell you to do, I'm going to acknowledge that, and I'm going to say, hey, good job. Let's move. Let's move on to the next one. And there's something refreshing about that with a young receivers core because, you know, it, you know, and I, I bring this up all the time. The Steelers, Steelers fans, I, I think, have gotten spoiled with the wide receiver position because you had the best receiver in football for about six straight years in Antonio Brown, and that's just something to kind of have a steep drop off on, you know, you know, and it's it's. It's sometimes people sometimes forget what it's like to just have a good wide receiver or even a very good wide receiver instead of just an elite wide receiver or the best wide receiver. So it's been tough for, I think, some Steelers fans to be like, man, Deontay Johnson, he drops the ball all the time. It's not that he drops the ball all the time. He drops the ball, in fact, less than a lot of the top receivers in the NFL. Uh, but you, when, you, when you compare it to what the Steelers have been used to, it feels like a lot more. And so the Steelers are looking for their next superstar wide receiver. Now they've paid Deontay Johnson to stick around for the next few years to be their top wide receiver. But could, could George Pickens be that top, the, the, the top receiver on this team? I don't think it's that out, out of the realm of the question right now. I, I think both Deontay Johnson and George Pickens are guys who can line up on the outside and Chase Claypool's a guy who can line up in the slot and cause a lot of problems for what the, for what the Steelers want to want to do on offense. Um, but for Pickens and what Jackson is trying to get out of him, I think it's great when you hear the way he talks about it, like, Hey, this guy's staying grounded. He's not, I don't have to worry about him paying attention to the outside noise. He's focused on every single rep and get and getting better. That's what you want to hear about a rookie. You don't want to hear a rookie getting a little too much. And what I meant about biting back, when I talked about, when I asked him about biting back at the defense, if you watch, if you're watching closely at St. Vincent college during these reps, you'll see sort of George Pickens go up against the guy. And if the guy breaks up the pass or something, and like you see them kind of looking at him, most likely they're saying something. Because there's, there's back and forth all the time. These are grown men. These are grown men, athletes that are the best, best athletes in the world. And they're coming to be competitive with each other. And they're going to push each other. And there's going to be trash talk. And when they talk trash to him, George Pickens does not take too kindly to it. Even, even though they're teammates, he barks right back at him. And sometimes he won't even bark right back at him. Like immediately after they say something, he'll be like, he'll wait for his next turn to go up against him, beat them. And then say, say that again, or something along those lines. And I'm like, Ooh, wow, there's some fire in that guy. There's a bit of dog in him. And that's where I think you see George Pickens with that personality that Frisbee Jackson likes. So, these are all things that I think align very well with this, with what the Steelers want in their, in their rookie wide receiver, their top rookie wide receiver. Calvin Austin has also done a solid job, but where do they use these guys? And I did a show about this way back when, after the draft where about where everyone lined up. 
Brisbane Jackson gave a very interesting answer towards that. We'll get to his answer and other parts of this interview that involved Deontay Johnson uh, in just a second here. But first, I got to talk to you guys about betonline.net. Betonline.net, y'all know about betonline. It's the place where you go to learn about all the betting stats and sports information so that you can make the most money when you're putting money down on your favorite sports, sporting events. Now, You'll find all the latest sporting developments, league reviews, and news on betonline.net. Right now, you got Major League Baseball going on. Preseason football is back, and that means the real NFL season is just right around the corner. But so is in a couple months. You're going to be talking about the NBA and the NHL, and then it's going to be full steam ahead for all the betting action that you could that, that you could you could want to get into. You can place all your preseason bets down at BetOnline. BetOnline. You can go to BetOnline.net to learn about all these changing odds and action to learn which best bet which best bets are there out for you to make your money. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends of the action when you visit BetOnline, where the game starts. Back here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Like I said, I talked with uh, receivers coach Frisbane Jackson for quite some time. Um, and along with me, you hear the voice of Joe Rudder of, 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 the, of the Trib. It's been a fun discussion. We had a fun discussion. Uh, even kind of afterwards, he and I kind of talked about what we were hearing from him. But this was this part was interesting right here about the play for you, where Frisbane talked about the positions that everyone will play. And, you know, we've heard about before, like, oh, Chase Claypool, you got to move him to the slot. Oh, Anthony Miller, is he a slot guy? Oh, is Calvin Austin a slot guy? Where does the, where do these guys fit? Listen to what Frisman Jackson had to say when we asked him about those positions. You feel you have a lot of interchangeable parts as far as the slot outside where you can kind of move guys around. Yeah, I mean, we've said it from the beginning, man. We all position those players. Um, we're just trying to find the best three guys or four guys, however many we are out on the field. Uh, I rotate the guys. I don't even tell them what position they play in. I just tell them to go out there and figure it out when they get out there. And there's a purpose to that. I just want to see every guy be able to line up and play every position and not try to hamstring themselves and say, hey, I'm an X or I'm an F or I'm a Z. Just go out there and play. And then during the course of the, or, or a series of plays, you may be F, you may be X, you may be Z. Just figure it out and just go play. Is that something that's different than normal? Because, like, I remember last year talking to Chase. He said, hey, I only played from, like, really like a couple spots in my rookie season, and now I'm playing all the different places. Is that something that, you know, not every receiver gets to do all the time? Well, that's how I've always done it. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I've been as a coach, whether I was in college or in the pros, you know, I told the players, we position as players. Everybody going to play every spot. And the way we teach the offense, man, we don't teach positions. We teach, hey, man, you're number one receiver, you're number two receiver. So the guys knows the whole concept and not just what a particular position does. Now, you heard that, right? Positionless players. Now, of course, the Steelers won't be positionless. They, they'll need to know where they're lining up. At. But, of course, he's saying, like, hey, I'm going to train these guys so that they can line up everywhere in the offense. There's a bit of reading in between the lines that, that I think is going to be interesting because it's cool to say that now. There's no there's no evidence that we can really show on tape, you know, because we're not we're also not allowed to tape practices and, and see where guys are, are, are there. But we'll eventually see how real that is because – in in as the preseason happens and as the regular season happens, we'll start to see where guys line up most often, and then we'll see. Okay, what do the Steelers want to do now? A few layers to this this where I'm where I'm going with this here. There's a lot of benefit to having guys play different positions. Now I know some people think, oh well, a guy a slot receiver is a slot receiver. He gets used to it. He gets really good at it. When you come out with the so with the same three receivers. Teams are going to send like they're going to teams are going the, the defense is going to see those those three guys in the huddle. And they're going to say, OK, we're, we're sending this crew out there, this defensive unit out there. But you're thinking like for if you're the Bengals, you have Mike Hilton as your slot corner. You're thinking, OK, in this situation, Mike Hilton's going to get this guy in the slot. And then all of us like last year it would have been Ray Ray McLeod most of the time. And then all of a sudden it's not Ray Ray McLeod, it's Chase Claypool or it's Deontay Johnson or this year be, maybe it's George Pickens. And then that creates matchup problems because then he's like, whoa, wait a second. That's not the matchup that we wanted to get. We didn't want to put our shortest corner on their tallest receiver. That's a problem. But it becomes hard to predict because these guys can line up in different places. And I specifically brought up Chase Claypool because he brought up to us going into the last season. He's like, hey, like my rookie year, I played two real, two real spots on the offense. you know, And I wanted to become a more complete player where I could play in several different spots. And you did see him line up in different positions, and that was good. But you want to see him be able to line up anywhere. And I think that's where Frisman Jackson's getting at. Now, here's the thing. And I sort of alluded to this when, when I started my response to that clip there. 
Frisman Jackson could be saying that because that that's his aim. But you kind of need to see it play out for it to be like, okay, this is real. Because it's very possible that like, hey, yeah, he's teaching them to be positionless. He's teaching them to just be ready wherever they put him in the wide receiver group. But at the end of the day, if you find out that a certain player is really, really good as a split end or really, really good as a flanker, but is just not feeling it in the slot, you're not going to force them there, right? You're going to make the, you're going to let them be their best version of themselves, and that can kind of force your hand into making guys be what's the opposite of positionless, position full, position more. I guess non positionless. It's not a word. It's terrible. Anyways, you get my point. They have positions. And, uh, I, but I think it's, I think it's a good concept for Frisbee Jackson to approach as a coach. Um, I'm just in, eager to see how do the player, how does, how do the players take on that challenge in, in the, in, in that situation? Um, because we're going to, we're certainly going to see can these guys be positionless? I mean, and Claypool talked about it. Um, you know, I think Deontay Johnson talked about it after his rookie season, you know, you know, learning, learning different spots, not just a different route tree because. What people need to understand, you're like, oh well, Chris, it's just routes. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. When you're playing on the outside, you're most you're more likely to get jammed. You're more likely to deal with better corners. You're more likely to deal with a different a set of uh, of challenges out there, and so that forces in your route tree different different th factors that you have to consider to get free off the line to make sure that you're beating your man in front of you to get to get clear if they're pressing you or if they're playing off covered to keep them off of you or to take away the leverage that they're trying to if they have inside leverage and you got an inside route how to beat that in different ways. Those are different skills, and it takes really crafty wide receivers to develop those, those talents, and that's where Frisman Jackson is going to have to really get these guys. Now, the good thing is, it's tough for me to do because I'm just watching it live with no replay available in training camp, but when I've been able to watch George Pickens closely and watch his footwork, he does have the effort of doing those things. Now, he's doing them against Akella Witherspoon, Cameron Sutton, Levi Wallace, those guys – all three veteran NFL cornerbacks with five plus years of experience each. So like, there's something to be said about that. He's beating those guys, but can he do that against a top tier corner? Like if the Steelers went up against Jalen Ramsey, uh, you know, if they, if they went up against Xavier Howard or Byron Jones, like, you know, those guys, how would he fare against those guys? Would, would he be, have something to counter what they're trying to do to him? That's where you'll start to see the real detail in, in his work. And I really think that's going to be interesting. And that could play into the whole conversation of can George Pickens be the man when it comes to the wide receiver position. But again, if this wide receiver room isn't just about him. Deontay Johnson, who did practice in partial, partially, uh, he caught some good passes um, on Thursday, which is a good sign for the hip flexor injury that he had. Um you know, you still got Chase Claypool, who didn't practice uh, on, uh, on on Thursday. His he didn't even he wasn't even wearing pads, and they were wearing full pads. I, I thought that's a you know that that's unfortunate because you want to see him be healthy and you want to see him getting back out there. You want to see this whole offense be healthy. Um, but you know, Calvin Austin look looking strong. Deontay Johnson when he's when he's out there looking strong. Miles Boykin, I will say, has had a really good week and a half. Because his first week and a half, the, the him, the first, even if it's just the first week, week maybe of him being at training camp, I thought he was looking rough. It wasn't working out. He was having to adjust. But Miles Boykin has been plucking the ball out of the air. And when I asked Frisman Jackson about that, he said, "Well, he's using his size better. He's, le he's learning that he's like, hey, I'm a big guy. I need to use my big, big guy size." So I thought that was interesting. But I, I, I wanted to also get into, of course, the, the biggest name in the room when it comes to receivers, and that's Deontay Johnson, the guy who's making the most money of the group. He just got paid by the by the Steelers wide receiver by the, by the Steelers to be their number one wide receiver for the next three seasons. I wanted to ask Frisman about how Deontay Johnson was in the room because you know typically when you think of of a, of a room like you know you think of like the Steelers defensive line Cam Hayward he's the head of it there's no questions asked Every, everyone kind of follow follows his lead you know for years Joe Hayden was the leader of the leader of the cornerback room uh you know Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro they were the leaders of the offensive uh, offensive line you get my point where I'm going with this right but Deontay Johnson is the most experienced receiver with the Steelers on the roster right now and you know, if you've ever listened to him talk, he's very soft spoken. He's not he's not going to sound like Ray Lewis. He's not going to sound like Heinz Ward. He, he kind of just gets to the point. And so I wanted to ask Frisman Jackson just what he thought, um, what what he thought of Deontay as that kind of leader. And if guys kind of gravitate around him uh, or gravitate towards him and around him 
uh, during these during the, the, the warm ups, during the, the, the classroom sessions and the learning sessions, because he is very talented. He has polished his craft a lot. Like I was talking about how it's important to polish your craft. He's done all those things. So I, I was curious about his leadership. Here's Frisman Jackson when I asked him that question. Uh, when we talk to like you know George and the guys, and they talk about wow, it's impressive to watch Deontay look. Has Deontay Deontay seems like a soft spoken guy. Is he a guy that kind of gets loud in the in the in the classroom and lead, leads everyone, or is it everyone kind of like, hey, we're all just in this together? There's no like one particular leader. Uh, I would say, man, he's a soft spoken guy, uh, but I think when he speaks, the guys listen. I mean, he does a great job. I see him all the time. You know, when George does something, he he may grab George. Hey, you should do this. Calvin does something. He grabs the younger guys and kind of give them a couple of tips. Hey, I saw it like this. What about if you do this? Uh, so he's coaching in his own way. He's, he's He's been verbal in his own way. He's not loud like me. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a loud guy, and I'm going to let my, my voice be heard. But uh, he does, his, does a good job in his own way. Cool. All, right, all right. Thank you. So that, yeah, that was the end of our interview there. But, you know, I, I wanted to get that in because I did want us to know what kind of leader would be Deontay Johnson be, because you don't always need vocal leaders. You know, like you, you don't need the guy. You don't need Joey Porter, who's like, you know, just kicking up the storm and everyone's leading, leading the, the, the you know, the, the pile and, and kind of being loud for everybody. But you need role playing leaders. You need guys who are sort of quiet, and just set the tone. and Everyone kind of just follows in behind them. And I, I think Deontay Johnson can be that because the guy does work very hard. You know, I brought up how. All, if you followed this show all last year, I was there for, in training camp, and I was always saying, man, first guy on the field, Deontay Johnson. Last guy off the field, Deontay Johnson, almost every single day, just, just working on his hands, working on his hands, and his hands got better. Um, and so now the question is, can his hands get even better, and can that can his work ethic rub off on the other members of, uh, members of, this, of this wide receiving group? That remains to be seen, but I think that there's a good sign that if they start to find success this year, there's going to be guys who, who take that way. And, and I'll say this too, at this training camp, there's almost everybody stays on the field after practice is over to work on something with their teammates. And so I, I think that there's a, there's good signs ahead for this wide receiver group, but we need to see who takes shape and uh, we need to see who, who also plays. I'll talk about who plays this, this Saturday against, against the Seattle Seahawks at, at, at Acrisure stadium. Mike Thomas gave us a bit of a preview and a bit of an idea as to far of how the squads will work out throughout the game. I'll break that down and give you my top few things to go over and to get ready to watch on that preseason game. We'll be right back right here on the lockdown Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Back here in the Lockdown Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter. Now, let's get you ready for this preseason game. Now, a few things. Um, one, Mike Tomlin did have a press conference Thursday, and in that press conference, he said basically broke it down like this. Hey, he plans to have the first team play the whole first quarter, then the second team play the second and third quarters, and then the third team play the fourth quarter. So he wants to get a lot more rep reps out of the second team. We'll see how that goes. But he also said, Players from each team can bleed over into anywhere. It's like if just because you're a first stringer doesn't mean that you also won't be a second stringer if he wants to see more work out of you. You got to remember, this is going to be a different a different kind of look for preseason because you know, he doesn't have Ben Roethlisberger. This isn't like a like okay, you're just testing to see if you know if he's if he's still got it or what what cobwebs you got to dust off. This isn't a cobweb dusting thing. This is a you're building the foundation type of type of project in preseason, especially for the offense. So, I wanted to go over some important things that I think you should watch out for. Now, one, Tomlin also said that the the dis distribution of the quarterback, you know, situation will be very similar to what it's been in training camp, but. It's interesting because Kenny Pickett lately has been running more with the twos than, than Mason Rudolph. Does that happen in, in, in this, in this, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen in the preseason game because Mason Rudolph was the number two for most of camp and Kenny Pickett's kind of taken it, you know, in the last few days, but it's not like, I, I don't get the impression that it's like a, Oh yeah, Kenny, you are our number two quarterback now because we don't like Mason anymore. I don't think that's, it's that at all. I think it's, it's what Mike Tomlin said at the beginning of camp. We're going to mix and match these quarterbacks with different teams because we want to see how they do in different situations. So I'm very intrigued to see how that plays out and who, which quarterbacks get to play with other quarterbacks or get, we get to play with different skill players because I don't expect Najee Harris to play. He, he's, he's, he was in full pads, but he wasn't hitting. Um, and he's still, he's still working his, his foot back. I think the Steelers are happy to, to not have to, 
worry about him in preseason. They know he's going to be fine. I don't think Benny Snell's going to play because he didn't practice either, and he had his knee wrapped up at the end of Wednesday. So there's a bit of concerns there. But, you know, I think the offensive line, it looks like Kevin Dotson might not play, so Kendrick Green's going to be in there. But how how does Mitch Trubisky handle the ones – as the as as the as the game goes on, how does he you know does he develop that rapport that connection that we see with George Pickens that we saw all through training camp? Does that seem prevalent? Does he go through his reads? Does the can the offense run the ball with basically what's going to be their third string running back out there? And there could be it, there's also an interesting question: Who is that third string running back? Is it Anthony McFarland? Is it Jalen Warren? Because Jalen Warren's had a really good camp. He had a 71 yard touchdown run in practice on Thursday, and they were fully live. Padded pet, you know, pads, everything. They were ready to go, and he he's been making plays. He's been kind of carving out a role for himself, kind of like how Willie Parker did. His cousin, you know, Willie Parker was undrafted, came to the Steelers, earned a spot, and then when it was time to shine, he did, and they kind of kept him on. Jalen Warren making it make an interesting stab there with the conversation, being like, "Hey, I deserve a shot in here. Like, give me give me a chance." Um, so I, I'm really interested to see how the quarterbacks are matched up with different talents on offense, because I think that could be play a major factor in how, um, in how, and how in their success, because there's, there's some, there's been a lot of passes where I feel like, you know, whether it's Mitch Mason or Kenny and where they are in the, in the lineup, like, you know, they threw a pass to a guy who didn't bring it down, but it's like, man, if that was Deontay Johnson or Chase Claypool or even George Pickens, that the, you know, that pass would have been brought in, but we're dealing with what we got here. So, Let's take another step back and let's. I want to switch over to the defense just to give you guys some defensive things to think about in this game. Uh, for one, I'm really intrigued to see how the cornerbacks play. Um, you know, Akella Witherspoon, this is you know a team that he's that he's very familiar with in the Seahawks. You know, how does he play against them? He's been dealing with a serious camp, you know, camp back and forth with George Pickens. You know, you know, if he's going to be a number one cornerback, what does he prove there? Um, you know, and, and the rest of the corners, how do they play? Um, I want to see Devin Bush and Miles Jack and Robert Splain. Who's playing what? Who's getting it done? Can Devin Bush get out of his own way and and make plays? And we we did a whole episode about that yesterday after my talk with Brian Flores, t- looking at the, the specific things that Devin Bush needs to do to get better and to become that complete linebacker. Um, you know, and Miles Jack again, he's he looked really good. So you're not as, as concerned about him, but you want you want to see the fruit of the labor. You want to see uh you want to see things work out. So there there's that. Um Montrevious Adams hasn't practiced lately. Uh he hasn't been around. Alex Highsmith hasn't practiced lately. So I, I don't expect those guys to play. So who steps up? It does the, the Marvin Leal beat up on the Seahawks in the inside. I think that could be a really interesting sign. I might even say by like mid season this year, DeMarvin Leal could be a good, really good factor for the Steelers. I just want to see how he does against in a different opponent and in, in a, in a different environment than just practice where he knows it's just a, it's just a rep and he's done. I have confidence that I think that he, that he's going to be able to make some plays, but um, we'll, we'll see how that plays out with the Mar- with the Marvin Leal. But I do think that's a, that's a major factor here. And I think a big part of this also is just continuity on offense. Can they move the ball? Can they keep, can they keep drives alive? Does Mitch Mason or Kenny look like they're composed within the structure of the offense? And is the structure working? Is the structure getting good matchup opportunities for them to decide between, because, you know, someone tweeted at me yesterday and, you know, and, and said, Hey, Chris, like, you know, I, I didn't, I never called for Matt Canada's head, but like, you know, are, are we seeing good things in training camp? And I, I think you, you are, but you know, it's one of those things that have to play out for an entire season. You know, and I think it's also important to remember Mike Tom has often talked about how, like, hey, like, you know, when it's preseason, we're not we're not we're not necessarily studying our opponent as much as we are studying ourselves because the result of the game doesn't matter. So it's more so like, hey, we'll give you some pointers so that you can get used to studying how how an opponent plays. But the bottom line is that you get that you're just trying to improve yourself in those moments. So who improves themselves the most? Who do, who do we see step out and really make, make make a good statement in this preseason game uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers? We're going to see because Saturday it's going to happen. Saturday night, Akersher Stadium. I'll be there covering the game. Um, check me out on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be tweeting out just my thoughts as the game goes along. 
Uh, we'll try to do a quick analysis and like a full analysis after the game is over. So do stick with us because we'll still have content coming to you this week. And that'll be some of that bonus content that I was talking about. That'll especially come, uh, the shorts come, you need to come more to YouTube. Uh, but we're going to try to do a little bit more than that this time around. We'll let you we'll, we'll let you know how that goes. But again, I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. We hope you have a great weekend. We hope you enjoyed our interview with Frisman Jackson, Steelers wide receivers coach. Let me know what you thought about how he said in the in the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, tweet at me if you if you if you had any questions from the, from the interview. Also, uh, you know if you if you if you if you enjoyed that, let me know what you're looking what you're looking at and or if any thoughts that you have going into the preseason game of guys that you have questions about. I'm always down to chat about that. Thanks to everyone who checks out the Locked On Steelers podcast. Remember, rate us five stars with a positive comment on Apple Podcasts. We get you a special shout out at the end of the show. Thanks again, everybody. I'll be seeing you sometime this weekend, breaking down how the Steelers did in their first preseason game. We'll see you soon.